Hi, I'm Ruth. And I'm Brenton. Welcome to Spectrum Today. We always are glad to be with you and to share some time. Well, it's, uh, it's the first week and we are in April. weekend of April. I was going to say that. I've noticed that we finally seem to have caught some better weather. I've, I've liked that. Lovely. I do too. It's so nice outside. I, I love the fact that the things are beginning to bloom and blossom and that the mornings are a little warmer. There's still a little bit of coolness <clears throat> in the air, but not like it's been. So no. I think better days are ahead. Well, there are some interesting things in the news, okay. and we're going to jump right to them. Here's one having to do with one of the leading candidates in the Democratic, um, well, those who are declared for the Democratic presidential nomination. Well, they're competing. Bernie Sanders. Most of us have heard of Bernie Sanders mm -hmm. as he was very competitive back in 2016 as well. He has for a long time said that people who have fulfilled their uh, obligation as felons, like done their prison time, should be able to vote. Now he seems to be expanding that and saying, I think that any person, mm -hmm. uh, even because they're citizens, mm -hmm. should still be able to vote even if they're in prison. How do you feel about that? I'm, uh, while they're still in prison, prison I'm not sure um, that I agree with that. But once they're out and they've paid their debt to society, I don't mm -hmm. know that I have, I don't, what is it now? I don't even know what it is now. Can you never? Can you I, ever I think right vote now, again? In most states, now I believe that the folks in Florida passed a bill uh, recently, or passed a referendum, something of that nature, that enabled the those who had completed their their prison time to be able to vote. They restored their prison or their voting rights. I believe that in most places, if you've been convic convicted of a felony, you lose your capacity mm -hmm. to vote. So what are you I, saying? But what he said is, um, they're still living in American society. And they have the right to vote. That's what he believes is well, true now. Well, I think that if you're in prison, serving prison time, that how can you really vote without issues there? I mean, that's the, con the concept is that you've lost some of your rights. The second thing is, though, I don't know that it's good to eliminate people from being able to vote forever, perpetually. Mm -hmm. I think at some point we have to hope that they are rehabilitated and could reenter society and live a normal life. And if they're not able to do that... Uh, wow. I mean, that really restricts their ability to live. Mm -hmm. So, interesting conversation piece. I don't really know what the, how that will all turn out. Yeah. Did you hear about the folks in Thailand that have been snapping selfies and pictures near a flight path and a runway? It looks, I've seen the pictures and it looks really frightening. Those planes are coming in so low. Mm -hmm. um, as they take selfies, it looks like the plane is just right overhead, but there are some severe penalties for those who do that. Well, there looks to be, uh, as it going forward, uh, one of the busiest airports in that country, in the country of Thailand, which is <laughs> the Phuket International Airport, flies right over this beach. And this beach has become a very po popular tourist destination mm -hmm. because people love to, to uh, get a picture, a selfie, a, a shot with these low-flying planes coming in. In fact, there's one picture of, of, a, of a man and a woman He's she's holding on, her she's, up, she's doing a head. On his, she's on his. She's on his head, like doing a handstand. Yeah, and she almost. It looks in the picture as if her foot almost touches the plane. Now I don't know that it's quite that low, but she said that the wind was so, or, or the the people said it was so dynamic that it was so, you know, powerful. Well, I think, imagine they, not, they lost their balance. Well, think of it. They could face forty thousand dollars, a forty thousand dollar fine, a sentence of up to twenty years in. Uh, jail sentence of 20 years mm -hmm. and also some of them even maybe the death penalty is that what that that would be the, the most extreme uh, situation yeah that would be crazy so so they're saying rethink your selfie um leave your leave your phones somewhere else and don't do that because it's just too dangerous i can imagine i wouldn't want to be on that beach there were other pic pictures of people sunbathing the shadow of the plane is right over them it looks like it's maybe 12 feet in the air above where they are it's just that's just dangerous. They're also concerned that it may distract pilots as mm -hmm. they're flying in. It's hard to believe that they're that low to the be a public beach, though. Yeah. I, I, I can't believe that they've even allowed the beach to still be open. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know all the details. So at least one person felt like they were going to be knocked over by mm -hmm. the the wind mm -hmm. uh, because they were so close. But anyway, I don't know. There's another one that has to do with, did you did you hear about the... The new airplane that they believe is going to be yep. able to fly, a space plane that would fly at 25 times faster the speed of sound. That is crazy. 
Talk yeah, about shaving a little bit of time off of your commute. Oh my goodness. Part of it was talking about how, how fast it would go, how, get you from one location to the other. I read a little London bit London to New York in 60 minutes. That's Think crazy. That. You'd be in, well, I've got to get on the plane. I'll be there in an hour. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's mm -hmm. something. 25 yeah. times the speed of sound. Mm -hmm. they're, they're still working on some of the things. They said not only would it be useful for transporting uh, people, but it could also be helpful to transport uh, cargo, I guess, to like the space station. Said so you can also go from the UK to Australia in four hours. That's amazing. Okay, so another thing that they have to, that's going to get really hot. I mean, isn't, didn't it talk about how hot that engine gets I to go that fast? I think concerns about trying to cool the engine. Yeah, there. that's going to be uh, something else there too. It, it, who thought we'd live that in a time it. where you could do something like that? Okay, you they remember said the days of the transporters of Star Trek? You know, you could be here and then you could be there in seconds. It says thousands of tubes inside the precooler, which are thinner than human hair, Woo! contain liquid helium that can cool the air as it rushes through them, rushes huh. past them. That's crazy. Interesting that stuff. is amazing. All right, so here's another one that, now this one is kind of one of those that I think might be interesting to a lot of folks because we uh, tend to, to find, how fast will that plane go? 4,000 miles per hour. That is Pretty rapid. Yeah, crazy. Pretty rapid. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, that's okay. So everybody anymore it seems, to, well, not everybody, but most everybody seems to be employed. I mean, we really have really low unemployment rates. So they've come out with a list of states uh, that are best mm -hmm. to look for jobs and worst to look for jobs. But something hit me on as we read this list. So listen to the top 10 uh, states for jobs. I think this is where the folks at Bankrate released this. Okay. Colorado. New Hampshire, Utah, Minnesota, Idaho, Massachusetts, Texas, <clears throat> North Carolina, California, and Georgia. But you know, as I read through that list, many of those states have pretty high cost of living and their housing issues are problematic. Certainly some of the areas um, where we've seen a lot of growth in job creation, it's becoming harder to live there. Hmm. Some of the states, including New Mexico, are on those where they say it's harder to find a job but they're also better cost of living states. So listen to this. West Virginia, Alaska, New Mexico, Wyoming, Louisiana, Worst state, Mississippi, yeah. Nevada, Arkansas, Kentucky, and Alabama are the list of the 10 states that they say it's harder to find a job in. But many of those states have lower cost of living. So I think it's kind of interesting. You have this, this, this combining of factors. Hey, great place to get a job. Real expensive to live. Mm -hmm. Maybe harder to find a job, less expensive to live. You know, it's a little bit of a conundrum, isn't it? Because yeah. you, you want to get a good job, but you may have to have a really, really good job to be able to find housing in a state mm -hmm. where the job market is so mm -hmm. hot that you can't find a place to live. Fuel costs in right. some of those places are higher. I think it's really a mixed bag, really. Yeah. You have to take it into consideration. I love visiting, like for instance, I love visiting California. It says that's one of the best place to, places to find a job. However, it's so expensive there. It is expensive. Housing yeah. is really unreasonable in, Cal in most, many parts of California. And you know, other practical things like fuel. We were uh, on Facebook this week and a, a Facebook friend who lives in California, Southern California, was really bemoaning the fuel costs. I mean, hmm. their fuel costs out there are often a dollar, maybe more than a dollar, a gallon more than here than in here. New Mexico. That's tough, especially mm -hmm. if you've got a long commute mm -hmm. on top of it because you can't live close to where you maybe work, for example. So, you know, even though people may say, well, you know, New Mexico may not have the best job market. I, say, yeah, I praise I the Lord. If you already have a job, be thankful because the cost of living here is much better than a lot of places. So I'll well, take into consideration the good the good things that New Mexico does have. Uh, exactly. Right. What Mexico can offer in terms of maybe for raising your children compared to a larger city um, than well, the housing take all those better, things, the fuel prices are better. Having the opportunities uh, in our state that that uh, for outdoor state. activities, mm -hmm. all of those things can really be positive. Well, we'll be back in a minute. We have a neat guest today. We do.
Certainly appreciate each of you who are involved and engaged with helping us here at Alpha Omega Broadcasting as we are uh, being supported by our viewers. Uh, over the last few weeks, we talked about some transitions in terms of equipment uh, mm -hmm. that we were needing repair, not really transition, but equipment repairs on top of Sandia Crest. Prior to that, we talked about the HD transition, which mm -hmm. is still ongoing, not fully completed, but uh, midstream. And then something else that I want to mention to folks that's coming in the next few months is uh, what's called the repack. The digital repack is uh, beginning to unfold as our sister station, KTVS, which is part of the Alpha Omega Broadcasting family of stations, has to move frequencies. And that's not something mm -hmm. that happens very <laughs> often, but you may have heard of the digital repack as they are moving all of the available TV channels to channels two through, I believe it's 37 now. And uh, channel 36, which is one of our stations, was caught up in that repack mm -hmm. as another station moved on top of where we were and we have to move to another frequency. That's expensive. So these are all the things that your donations But things that we matter. did not anticipate and we did not cause. It was something that happened and we got caught up in and so we have to comply with that. Yep, that's something mandated by the FCC. Mm -hmm. It's, right. you know, it's either you, you move or you don't exist anymore. Literally, I mean, that, that in terms of, of a TV station. So that repack for channel uh, 36 KTVS uh, for us is now happening when as will well. That take, when will that transition? Do you know the dates? Well, no, that? I don't have a hard date. I mean, the tr we have some of the gear is already in town on the ground, but, you know. Um, or when I, we have to have it. I in. will know more soon. <laughs> well, remember, <laughs> guys, you can connect with us on social media. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. You can find us on the Internet at kazq32.org. Remember to call in if you have a donation, 505-884-8355. And also send in your check to, the, to our offices at 4501 Montgomery Boulevard, Northeast Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87109. God bless you for all you do. Hey, it's me, Ruth and you're invited over to cook with me. I'm leaving the studio and coming right next door, bringing my best kitchen tips and family recipes straight to your home. I'll have my friends coming over with their favorite home-cooked meals and memories to share with you. So be my guest and come on in with Ruth Next Door every weekday at 5, only on Alpha Omega Broadcasting. excited to have with us today Anthony Romero who is with the city of Albuquerque but also today going to be talking to us about the 2019 National <laughs> Senior Games. Anthony welcome. Thank you so much for having me on today I appreciate it. It's good oh, to have you. It's we exciting. are excited to, to learn more about <laughs> yeah. what's going on. Well this is pretty exciting news. Tell us a little bit about the 2019 Senior Games and where are they going to be? Well, so the 2019 National Senior Games are going to be hosted in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We are super <laughs> excited about deal. this. Yes. Albuquerque is excited and yeah. so are the senior athletes. Uh, the games will be played for a duration of 12 days from June 14th through the 25th. And they will be all around the city of Albuquerque at various oh, okay. venues. Um, we're going to have some outside of the city. Uh, we're be doing the triathlon mm -hmm. at Cochiti Lake. Wow. And we are going to be having uh, many sports played at the Athlete Village, which will be at the Albuquerque Convention Center. So we'll be playing sports like table tennis, badminton, volleyball, and shuffleboard all in the village that at the Albuquerque cool. Convention Center. That is very Pretty cool exciting for stuff. 12 days. How many athletes did you, did you mention how many athletes? So I think <laughs> Albuquerque is on track for being we're going to set a record in wow. Albuquerque. I really believe that we will have the most number of athletes participating in any national senior games. Wow. Louisville, Kentucky and Orlando, Florida hold uh -huh. the record of 12,000. And we were hovering very near 12,000 athletes the last time I checked. And registration deadline was April 2nd. So I'm pretty confident that we're going to bust right through that 12,000 record. And Albuquerque, New Mexico will be the largest senior games in history. 
What that is a, great. What a swell in numbers during that time. That's exciting. It's kind of like when the Balloon Fiesta comes to town, and you know, every, all the restaurants are full, which is great for the city. Absolutely. As well. you can, a great way to highlight the city and what we have here. Especially yeah. now, you're going to have to watch out if you eat healthy during the senior games because <laughs> those restaurants are no doubt going to have a standing room only, oh, yeah, you know, kind of so. situation. Well, to talk to us a little bit about some of the events. Now, when you think of like a, a, a Nationals games, you kind of have, I, I picture at least, an Olympic kind of thought. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of what this is like? That's exactly what it's like. That's it's cool. uh, it's the National Senior Games. It's very much like the Olympics. There will be athletes that participate in five-year age divisions. So there's 50 to 54, 55 to 59. Uh, okay. Julia Hawks, I met Hawkins, I met her in Birmingham, Alabama at the 2017 National Senior Games, and she's coming to Albuquerque. She's 103 years old and wow. will be participating in um, a track and field events. So wow. there's just the gamut from your yeah. highly competitive athlete to folks that are just maybe after they retired and started wanting to get active and be involved in competitive sports are starting to do this. But you have folks that That's are amazing. serious competitors, just like <laughs> counselor Brad Winter. Mm -hmm. um, he's a pole vaulter and wow. he'll be participating in pole vaulting. Um, here I got to see him compete in Birmingham, Alabama at the 2017 National Senior Games. Huh. And so wide variety. It's one of my funny ir irritations is when people say, oh, how cute, those cute little seniors. Oh These my. seniors no, are they're, fierce. They're, yeah. There are some that are, say. they are yeah. great, and they're definitely an inspiration to us all to keep healthy and yes. active. That's wonderful. Well, let's talk about the preparation it takes to, to get ready for this as, as a city. Lots yes, and I'm lots sure. of preparation. <laughs> We have a great opportunity right now. I'm, not, I'm sure most of you in the city have heard Mayor Keller's philosophy of one Albuquerque. And that's really a sort of all hands on deck approach. Mm -hmm. And so all of the city departments have really been pitching in to help me. I'm currently deployed to the department uh, or to the 2019 National Senior Games. Mm -hmm. I'm the associate director of the city of Albuquerque's Department of Senior Affairs. But I have departments um, from the transit department helping me a mm -hmm. ton to parks and recreation oh, that yeah. makes sense yes. solid waste albuquerque police department the fire and rescue wow. folks so yeah. people are really on board to help this visit albuquerque as a partner and also our own new mexico senior olympics who they have been highlighting the importance of healthy aging for over yeah. four decades in our wow. community, longer than the National Senior Games. Wow, that's amazing, that's amazing. How did our city get chosen? I mean, this is a, yeah. a pretty big honor, but I, does it go out to bid? I mean, you hear about that when you hear of, like, you know, like the Olympics again, mm -hmm. using it as does. a reference point. How does, it, how does it happen? It goes out to bid, and so several years ago, the city of Albuquerque had bid on it, and unfortunately, we were not selected, and we tried again several mm -hmm. years ago <laughs> and this time we were selected to host the 2019 so national cool. senior games a team from the association comes to albuquerque they check out our venues okay our facilities mm -hmm. they want to see if we have uh the right sort of layout and convention center space if we have enough lodging so there's a whole yeah. bunch of different criteria that they're looking for and they really fell in love with our city and thought yeah. that the diversity here um, and the culture and the tradition would be a, a total inspiration for athletes to come here. And it really has. And so yeah. if we break that record, uh -huh. we're going to have a lot to be proud of here oh, in our yes. city and state. Sure we will. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So, okay, you mentioned they're going to be at different venues, right? So if someone who wants to go, is there going to be a cost for them to come No, and watch? it is free for all spectators. So all of the well, events great, are yeah. free. It is. So you got to come out and cheer on these folks. I think so, Get yeah. your uh, churches, your congregations, your sports um, to get out there and... Uh, and your work teams, yeah. get out there and support them. And also volunteer. We have yes. a lot okay. of volunteer spots open and they're in four hour shifts. And if you go to the website at www.nsga.com slash volunteer, you can sign up for some of those um, sporting events. And I'll, I'll bring back some of these nice um, okay. postcards yes. that uh, 
uh, highlight our efforts to recruit volunteers. How many volunteers did you say you needed for an event? So we have, we're really, my target is getting between 3,000 and 3,500 volunteers. I have just over 7,000 volunteer slots to fill. Okay. And those slots are in four hour increments yes. throughout the games. And there's also a shoulder. So we have to do a lot of setup. We have to lay floor for volleyball, lay floor for badminton. Wow. So that's going to take a lot of work mm -hmm. even before the games start on mm -hmm. the 12th. And as you yes. can imagine, when they conclude on the 25th, we'll have a lot of close out, clean, uh, yeah. clean up to do. So volunteers throughout that whole time is important. And I'm sure that our city <laughs> is going to step up to the plate to yes. help. And they can do that online as well. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Awesome. So that process should be pretty easy. What kind of cost do we have? I mean, to put on a games like 2019, you know, national senior games, is there, there's got to be a cost to the city because you're using city facilities and you know, you're using transit. And you need the police. So I mean, what, what is it going to cost to do something like this? So we're every day we're being very mindful of mm -hmm. what our budget looks like. Uh, we are just around the four million dollar mark to okay. put on the entire event um we are looking for sponsors okay. today still okay. and hazel tall leach is our director of philanthropy and she is the the go-to person i know a lot of businesses and folks are really interested in sponsoring we have some great sponsors that have come to the table already wonderful and we're always looking for more yeah so we talked about the volunteers can we actually um, maybe volunteer at certain areas if there's something I, I would rather do over something else. Absolutely. So when you go onto that volunteer site, there's going to be a menu of options. You can okay. volunteer to um, help out at one of the special events like the flame arrival ceremony where oh, yeah. the uh, mm -hmm. uh, ceremonial cauldron will be lit through the duration of the games to the celebration of athletes or to any of the sporting events. So if you click on Let's say pickleball, for example, uh -huh. you can choose to help out with results. You can help oh, out with cool. athlete hospitality, athlete registration, uh, a variety of different jobs yeah. and volunteer assignments are available for folks to take advantage of. Very exciting. Okay. okay, so as people get ready for this event, again, it comes in the month of June, June 2019. The starting date is going to be what date? June 14th. Okay, and it runs then for 12 days opportunities to see lots of different things. Is there an opening ceremony or anything yes. like that? So on June 15th at 7 p.m. we'll gather on Civic Plaza and okay. that's where we will have our flame arrival ceremony. We'll have some torch runners running the torch up to the cauldron. That cauldron <laughs> will be lit throughout the duration of the games. And once the cauldron is lit and the athletes officially announce, let the games begin, we will have a great production by Frances Lujan and her production team called Noche en Fuego. Okay. And it'll take you through a history of New Mexico music and dance. Very and nice. so folks will get an opportunity to check that out. That'll be fun. And then we have the celebration of athletes on Saturday, on the 19th. Um, so that's a, Wednesday. A yeah. lot of great things. Encourage you to look at the National Senior Games website and uh, stop by there, get involved with volunteerism. Certainly appreciate, Anthony, you coming and sharing with us and giving us a, uh, a highlight of what's coming yes. to our city. Ruth, uh, recently I had the privilege of sharing with our congregation a um, message that had to do with the dangers of impatience. And mm -hmm. let's go to the book of Exodus today, chapter 32. Let's just read one verse, verse number one, to get us started. Okay, when the people saw how long it was taking Moses to come back down the mountain, they gathered around Aaron. Come on, they said, make us some gods who can lead us. We don't know what happened to this fellow Moses who brought us here from the land of Egypt. 
Isn't that something that they would not even have a... Make us some you know, gods. We, we need something to happen. Now, if you go back a little bit into Exodus chapter 24, verse 18, it tells us that, and this is, I think it's reading out of the NIV, that Moses entered uh, the cloud as he went up on the mountain, and he stayed on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. So we know that Moses had been gone about eh, maybe six weeks at this juncture. That seemed like a long time to the people. They were waiting. Six weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot can happen in six weeks. But here's the danger of becoming impatient. It can cause you to enter into sin if you become impatient and give up on yep. waiting for God's yes. purpose and just embark on it yourself and say, I'm just, I've had enough. I've waited long enough. Either God doesn't care or God has remembered me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think we all mm -hmm. struggle with that from time to time. Right. God, do you remember me? Do you remember what I'm going through? Yeah. It's been a long time, God. It's been several weeks now, several days, maybe several years, and you haven't shown up. And yeah. I've prayed, I've waited, I've maybe even fasted, and I haven't seen anything happen. But the second mm -hmm. result can be that we can instead, instead of allowing this to lead us into sin, we can allow this to deepen our time with God. We can say, God, I really want to know what you have for me in this season. And Lord, as I wait, I want to wait to hear mm -hmm. your voice. And mm -hmm. that really should be our response, although that is a challenge to You know, all many us. times that's an opportunity for us to grow. It's also, it is an opportunity for us to grow. I was talking with someone this week who was like, I am really tired. I'm tired of waiting. And I've never been close to, this close to giving up. And I encouraged her. I said, lean into the Lord. Even when you don't understand it, you might be discouraged. Continue to believe that he knows what's best for you and he has not forgotten you. And you can be that person of encouragement to someone who may be feeling that way too and say, hey, if you feel that way, call me up. Shoot me a text. We'll meet up. I'll pray with you. I'll be the one to, to be the one who agrees with you during this time. But it is a time where we can, many times, what God is trying to do in our life and, and cause us to grow happens in the time of waiting. James 1, 4 says, but let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. I, I'm not going to tell you it's easy to wait because it's not. it's not. It's very difficult waiting for the answer that you are longing for and you're yep. desiring. And yet God is faithful mm -hmm. and he will come through for you. And I don't want you to give up short of God's answer. Have a blessed day.